some people see the gospel, um, a lot of Christians just see the gospel as God loves, God loves us, but we are sinners. But he sent his son to give his life for us. And if we surrender to him and make him the Lord, then he comes into our lives and gives us peace and grace. Now that is fantastic and wonderful. Um, but it's only a, a, a fraction of the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ means that you are destined to overcome Satan and sin. You're destined to rule with him. You're destined to move in the, move in the supernatural. You're destined to move in miracles and wonders. You, the, the whole gospel is far bigger than just being saved. Do you, do you understand? It is, it is powerful, the gospel of Jesus Christ. What he has planned for you and me is incredible. But if you see in, in, in that, little, um, uh, that little clip, is there is a pathway from security and protection to moving into all that God has for you. And sometimes... God takes us through situations and difficulties so that we can experience the cross touching our lives. Do you know, just speaking about miracles and wonders, don't create wonders. It doesn't happen. It happens when we surrender to Jesus and allow the cross to touch our lives. The Bible says, if we die with him, we will live with him. Do you understand? It's, so some of the ways that God does this, he takes us through circumstances in our lives. Let me tell you this. Don't always run away from your circumstances. If they are there to enable you to meet with God and to change your life, I've got to say this honestly. Every radical change in my life has happened through going through difficult circumstances. I don't like the circumstances, but through them, I become closer to Christ and his cross works in, his, in my life. And, and over these past few months, I've experienced the wonder of his life touching my life and changing me radically. That's the work of the cross. It's, it's a glorious thing. Um, I remember uh, some while ago, uh, watching Catherine Coleman. Now, some of you probably won't have heard of Catherine Coleman. In the 50s and 60s, she was an American preacher who saw amazing miracles. She moved in the supernatural. She was very dramatic, wore these flowing gowns and walked onto the stage. But when she came, she moved in the miraculous in mighty ways. And I was, I was watching on YouTube Catherine Coleman speaking. And and she was talking to a group of students, and she said, she said, when people see the signs and miracles, they long for them. She says, but they've never seen the cost. They've never seen the cost that happens in the background. There is a cost to moving into the fullness of what God has. And I, during this four weeks, I want to take you on that journey where Christ would touch your life. I delight in the cross, but it's when the cross touches our life that we change. So I, I want us to take this journey. And, and for, for this week, I, I want to um, look at um, something that's, that's very special uh, about the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, <clears throat> what I've found is this. There are some magnificent words that describe what Christ has done on the cross. There are words like atonement, justification, sanctification, redemption. Uh, these words, listen, please hear me. Don't run away from those words. Don't run away. Find out what they mean. Look at what they mean because they are beautiful words that declare how wonderful the cross is and what it has achieved, and what it can achieve in your life. But I want to talk about one word that um, it doesn't come much um, up in uh, uh, theological books, 
Um, it is there, but it's called regeneration. I want to talk to you about regeneration. In other words, regeneration is a posh theological word for being born again. If you are a Christian, you have been born again. This is the necessary equipping. What I share today is foundational. It is totally foundational for the rest of your life that you know exactly what happened when you got born again. So I'm going to look, I'm going to take you to two scriptures which speak about the wonder of being born again. This is, this is if you have received Christ, you have been born again. You've heard the term born again Christian. That's a regenerated Christian, okay? John 3, I'm going to look at John 3, and then we're going to look at Ezekiel 36. Listen to John 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with you. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old, Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God Unless he's born of water and the Spirit. Listen to this. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Now I want to read something from Ezekiel 36. This is a prophet that lived hundreds of years before, had a, a, a wonderful understanding of what happens to you when you're born again. Now I'm just going to give you four things, four radical things. Listen, when you, when you got saved, it wasn't a mental exercise. It wasn't, oh, I believe, oh, I'm saved now. It was a radical power encounter. Something happened in your body. Something radical and powerful happened in your body. And Ezekiel 36 really, really um, describes it. Listen to this. Verse 24. For I will take you out of the... It's Ezekiel 36, 24. For I'll take you out of the mountains. I'll gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. This is it. Number one. I will sprinkle clean water on you. And you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Four glorious things that happened to you when you got born again. The first is this, he will sprinkle clean water on you and make you clean. This is a this is wonderful thing. This is what happened when you got saved. Now, now, there are two aspects of being cleansed by the blood of Jesus. One is a totally legal thing in the courts of heaven. When you stand before the, in the courts of heaven... Christ declares you acquitted of anything against you because of the blood of Jesus, because he took the sins of you. That is called justification. I remember John Spiller preaching on justification. Do you remember this, John? This was years ago. You don't remember. He dressed up as a judge. I remember you dressed up as a judge and declared us acquitted and innocent. That is justification. There is no sin against you, no debit account, but that is only part of it. You're not only acquitted, you are, you are credited all the righteousness of Christ. 
It's not that your bank account is empty. It's full. That's in heaven. Your bank account is filled with the righteousness of Christ. What is that about? That is justification. But there is another aspect of the cleansing of Jesus Christ. And that is, he cleanses your body now. Let me read you this. This, this, is, this is just wonderful. It's, um, this is Hebrews 10, 22. Listen to this. Let us, Hebrews 10, 22. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. So there is an aspect of the blood of Jesus that washes you clean now. Now, I don't know about you. I can tell you from my own experience, there have been times in my life where I have lived wrongly, totally wrongly. But I know Christ has forgiven me. And I've embraced the forgiveness of God. But I've still felt guilty. I've still felt guilty entering the, promise, the, prom, the presence of God. In other words, there have been times when I've known God has forgiven me, but I can't forgive myself. Let me tell you this. When Jesus died for you, he didn't just cleanse you in heaven. He cleanses you now from a guilty conscience. This, let me tell you this. If you have a guilty conscience, you cannot have faith. You can't move in faith. You cannot because guilt robs you. But hallelujah, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses your guilty conscience and washes your body so you can enter his presence with confidence. Do you understand that? It is dynamic. You have been washed clean. Hallelujah. eh? Hallelujah. Let me tell you this. This gets better. This gets better. The second thing is, he takes away your heart of stone. That's what he says in Ezekiel. Now, let me tell you, he doesn't doesn't change your heart. Do you understand that? In, In Hebrew literature... They use organs of the body to describe something like um, like bowels of mercy or God will rescue with his strong right arm. Look, God is spirit. He doesn't have a right arm. Do you understand? It's, it's describes something. So when it talks about a heart, it's talking about the center of your being, the source of your life. That's, that's your heart. Now, before you were saved, let me tell you this, folks. Your heart was evil. When you were born, you didn't have to sin. You were born a sinner. That means the source from your heart was evil. Are you with me? It was a natural thing for you to do was sin. When Christ died, he took that away. He destroyed your evil nature. Do you understand that? This is dynamic. Suddenly, he took away. The Bible describes it. If you look in Ephesians, Colossians, it says, he, he circumcised you with the circumcision of Christ, where he took your evil nature away. Romans 6 says, you, you are, you, the, the old man has died. That means he's taken the evil nature. And you say, well, does that mean I don't sin anymore? No, of course not. You can still sin. But if I can put it this way, you sin from the outside. Satan will will try and cause you to sin through your emotions, your thinking, your desires. Do you understand? Your feelings. But he cannot get to the root. The root has been dealt with. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, if you grasp this, if you can grasp this, it's a secret to living a supernatural life. He has dealt with the root of sin. Hallelujah. 
Now, let me tell you this. Now you have to choose to sin. You are no longer a slave to sin. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Not only that, you can rule over your thinking and your emotions and your feelings and your lusts. You can rule over them because the root has been changed. Hallelujah. Well, I get excited myself then. <laughs> Romans 6, 11 says, count yourself dead to sin. Listen, this, this is so important. It's, this, this is just the start, folks. He's dealt, he's dealt with the evil nature. The third thing is this. He's, he's, he's made your spirit alive. Now, I don't know. I don't know how many of you are aware that you have a spirit. There's a part in you. It's your spirit. Um, the, the Proverbs 20, 27 says, the, the spirit is your inner being, the very depth of inside you. Now, um, when, before you became a Christian, uh, the, the spirit is your ability to communicate with God because God is spirit. That's what separates us from the animals. We, we have an ability to communicate with God. But before we became a Christian, our spirit was dead. It was dead. But when you got born again, it was made alive. Suddenly your spirit was made alive. I, I, tell you, I hope I'm communicating this. This is so exciting. Listen, this is radical. You know when he says, that which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, your, your spirit is made alive. Suddenly, suddenly, I don't know, you, you would have known this, suddenly you can hear God. Suddenly God speaks to you. You can get revelation from his heart. Why? Because your spirit, your inner being, is alive. Hallelujah. You, you, you hear God intuitively. It's, it's because your spirit is alive. Now, the, the truth is this. Uh, the truth is this. That when you got born again, you are alive inside. The, 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 the trouble is, is, is most of us, as Christians, many of us as Christians, our spirit has been made alive, but it hasn't developed. Do you understand? It hasn't been used. It's, it's the same with any, any part of your body. If you want to develop your muscles, you, you have to do exercise. You know, I know many of you go to the gym. I know many of you work out by the looks of you, you know. But um, that's, that's it's a simple principle. When you use a particular thing, you develop it. Is that right? Yes. Now, many people, this is why many people do not move in miracles. They haven't developed their spirit. In Ephesians 3, God says, He will strengthen you in your inner being. It's a work of God where he strengthens your spirit. Listen, folks, it is time. It is time to start exercising your spirit. You see, Mick, Mick how, how do I exercise my spirit? I'll, I'll tell you some ways. But God will tell you some other ways. Here are some of the ways you exercise your spirit. When you read something in the Word of God and your circumstances say the opposite, when you believe God and declare it, your spirit is strengthened. Do you understand? When God calls you to do something and you say, I can't do it. I can't do it with my natural ability. But you step out in the power of God, your spirit is strengthened. Whenever you use dependence upon God rather than your natural abilities, you move in the spirit and you strengthen your spirit. Let me tell you this. This is for something. It, it, it is true for you. Whenever you resist Satan, 
You do it in your spirit. You don't just say, oh, I'll resist you, Satan. That doesn't work. It's just words. When you resist Satan from your spirit, spirit is strengthened. Do you understand? Listen, folks, I am challenging you this day to start exercising your spirit. And as you do, God will strengthen you in your inner man. And you will start to do things you never dreamt of because he is with you. Isn't that magnificent? Do you believe it? It's glorious, isn't it? I, I've, I've learned it in several ways. I'm, listen, listen. I am talking to myself here. I, I'm, honestly, I am. I have learned it in two specific ways. I've learned it speaking in tongues. When you speak in tongues, you're exercising your spirit. You're, listen, if, if you want to move in miracles... Every time you speak in tongues, you are moving miraculously. Did you know that? Every time you speak in tongues, you're moving in the miraculous. Because you're depending upon the Spirit of God, not upon your natural abilities. Firstly. Secondly, I have learned it by studying the Scriptures. I do not, you do not study the Scriptures with this. That's where most people, I, I still fall into the same trap. I get into the Word of God, I think, oh, what good things can I discover here? And God says, stop. I'll speak to you here. I'll give you revelation here. So I say to God, in fact, I, 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 it's, it's a prayer that I, I live by. Holy Spirit, you are my teacher. I do not get it through mental things. I don't disband my mind. My mind has to catch up. My mind has to catch up with what God shows me. But it's revelation. And let me tell you this. It isn't just for me. The greatest thing I can teach you is to hear God for yourself. It's true. I, I've, I've told this story so many times, but I, for some of you who haven't heard this story, so I'll get away with my... When, when my son was young, um, when my son was young, uh, we couldn't get him to eat. All he ate was Nutella on toast. That's all he did. So um, we had to try and find ways to feed him with food. And uh, this was a technique that I adapted. I'll get the meat and vegetables on a, on a fork or spoon. I'd say, now, Ben, here, here comes the plane. Here comes the plane. Open the hangar gates. Open the hangar gates. In, like that, you see. And, and I got him to eat like that. He, he turned out to be a pilot as well, so I, I don't know why I haven't there. But say, say, if I, say if you came around to my house now, and he's in his 30s now, and he's sitting there, and I say... Uh, Right, Ben. Here comes your movement. Here it comes. Open the hangar gates. You would say, this is sad. Wouldn't you? You'd say, this is sad. It would be really sad, wouldn't it? Let, let me say this to you. Uh, this is a challenge. Many Christians live by somebody else feeding them. Every Sunday on God channel. Every, every Christian feeds them feeds on other people's food when God wants you to feed yourself. And that comes by exercising your spirit. When you exercise your spirit, then God feeds you. So, I'm telling you, I'm telling you these are beautiful things. One, he cleanses you. Not only in heaven, but he cleanses your guilty conscience. Washes your body clean of every sin. Secondly, he takes away your evil nature. The root has been broken. Thirdly, he sets your spirit alive. Now, this is the icing on the cake. He puts his Holy Spirit in you. He gives you. Let, let, let me tell you. You, you say, let, let, me get, let me get it over to you. That this is, this is not a mental thing. 
When you got born again, you received the full nature of Jesus Christ. You received his full nature. 1 John 3 says, You need not continue to sin because God's seed, sperma, the Greek word is sperma, God's put his sperma in you. He's put his very seed in you when you got born again. Do you know when it talks about being born again, I I say this reverently, the same word is used as when Mary conceived Jesus. When the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and that which will be born of you will be the Son of God. Same word. When you got born again, the Spirit came upon you and the seed of Jesus Christ was put in you. This is astonishing, isn't it? This, this, isn't, this isn't just, this is real life. You have the very nature of Jesus Christ in you. That means you don't have to seek righteousness. I've, I've had to learn this over and over again. I, because one of my quests in life is to be righteous. And, and God, God said to me once, Mech, you are seeking your own righteousness. Stop it. I've got a righteousness for you. I've put my righteousness in you. Matthew Matthew says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not your own, not your own. You have the righteousness of God. Um, Listen, when, when, uh, when I was born of flesh, I was flesh. So, um, that, when, when, I, when I was naturally born, believe it or not, I became like my dad. I became like my dad. I spoke like him. I even wrote like him. I don't know how it happens. But that which is born of flesh is flesh. I, I, I became like my dad. In fact, if somebody rang up, um, they, they, would, uh, they would often think I was my dad, you know. Um, and, uh, and I did some naughty things because of that, but I'm well, not going into that. But, um, but, um, but I became like that. When you're born of spirit, you become like your dad as you exercise your spirit. You have the Holy Spirit within you. Once you discover this, once you discover this, that you have the power of God in you. You can, you can do, and, and the, what I want to do for the, for the rest of this series, because I, um, next week I, I want to tell you how you can live overcoming sin and Satan. Let me, let me tell you, we are destined to defeat Satan. We're destined to set people free. Do you know, Jesus went everywhere, freeing people who are under the power of Satan. That's your calling. But the first thing is this. He, through our circumstances, he changes our life. I want to tell you, you can be freed from sin. You can be freed from sin. Not only that, you can be freed from self. Let me tell you this. We are called to glorify Christ. You cannot glorify Christ and yourself. You cannot. The way you glorify Christ is by glorifying him, not yourself. He frees you from self. He frees you. Let let me say this. To move in the supernatural, he frees you from the natural. Through the cross of Jesus Christ, he will free you from having to live just by your natural abilities. Isn't this glorious? This is the work of Christ. Um, that there, there are glorious things that Christ has done and achieved for us. But there are mighty things that he has done in us. Once the cross touches you on the inside, it is transforming. It is transforming. And 
it will enable you and lead you to rule. Uh, uh, I, well, we, we will look at it later. You are called to rule with Christ. And it starts with ruling yourself. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. I hope, I hope this has been a taster to see what happened when you got born again. Mighty things. You were washed clean. Your old evil nature, nature was broken. Satan can only come from the outside in. Can't come from the inside. Because the, if, 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 if the, the root is holy, so are the branches. That's why you're sanctified. Some people think, oh, I've, 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 I've got to become sanctified. Well, no. The first thing is you see you are sanctified. You can't become sanctified if you don't see you are sanctified. You are sanctified because the root in you is holy. And if the root in you is holy, you are holy. Then you work that out. Do you see? That is it's so important to see that Christ has done the work. It's what Frida came forward um, a few weeks ago and talked about that, that often the cross works right in the middle of our circumstances. And I just say, I finish by saying this. Um, probably uh, it, is, it is totally true to, to say that most of the truth I am speaking about has happened because I've had to face up to circumstances in my life. And I've said, Lord, uh, I can't change this, but you change me. And uh, this is why it's so priceless and why uh, don't always try to run away from your circumstances because God might be working something in you that will be eternal and precious and even cause you to do mighty things for him. If you're in difficult circumstances, I'm not saying there are some circumstances you do need to deal with, but first question is, Lord, are you doing something in me? Do it in me first. And then, if, it's, if I need to be free from it. Amen. Amen.